It's the Score North Twin Show. All right, Score North Extra Innings. I am live from Target Field right now. AJ Fredrickson's from home. I'm actually in a closet. Yes, I'm trapped <laughs> in the closet uh, right now at Target Field. Typically, for anyone who has seen a few of these other ones, uh, I've been able to do these shows from the Legends Club. Uh, today, I am doing this from a broom closet, so bear with me to a degree. We're still kind of working out some of the logistics uh, before the games, but <laughs> this is the Score North Extra Innings content here. My name is Declan Goff. That's AJ Fredrickson. You can expect content uh, basically from every Twins home game for myself. The issue is the Twins haven't played that many home games due to off days and rainouts. I want to get into that here in just a little bit. Uh, but one of the benchmarks, AJ, I really want to get into at the start of each series at Target Field is what I call a vibe check. Now, uh, I'm not, I don't have to explain what a vibe check is to the kids uh, like, like Judd Zolgad, so that's kind of nice. But just what are the vibes feeling like as the Twins uh, enter a big series here against one of the best uh, teams in baseball and the L.A. Dodgers? So uh, let's kind of take a look at what's happening here. Obviously, the Dodgers are coming to town. Super exciting. You got Shohei, you have Mookie Betts, you have Freddie Freeman, you have the best lineup. You have the World Series favorite. That's just called what it is. Um, you have the World Series favorite basically here in Minneapolis. And I know right now things kind of feel like a little bit like they're puckering for the Twins, right? The runners in scoring position has been a problem. The starting pitching depth might be an issue. And there's been some small tankers to the lineup and roster that I'll get to here on this episode. But it is hard to get into a routine when you've only played seven games in 11 days. Um, I'm not making excuses necessarily, but baseball is obviously an incredibly routine sport. The Twins have played seven. The Dodgers have played 12. Like it, it's, they've played five more games than them throughout the, since the start of the year. And I know LA started in South Korea, but it's hard to get into routine. So do I think the Twins are going to go out here and sweep the Dodgers? Certainly not. And if they did, uh, I'll gladly be wrong and wear my hat here or eat my hat uh, from 48 hours from now. But I also believe if you can take two out of three from a World Series favorite like the Dodgers, you aren't going to be as puckering. You're not going to be as nervous. You're not going to be like looking around being like, oh, here we go again, another slow start to the season. In fact, I think if you take the series against the World Series favorite, AJ, I would say those vibes are pretty electric if you're able to do that. Yeah, and this is a Dodgers team that actually just lost a series, their last one, to the Cubs. They took one out of three down at Wrigley Field. One of those, uh, a, a shootout, essentially. It was a 9-7 final, and yesterday they were in a very lengthy rain delay that kind of threw the game off, and they just couldn't get their offense started really ever. Um, so now they're going to come in. They're probably going to have this as a grudge series, essentially, for them saying we got to get right. But that being said, the Cubs didn't start all that hot to the year, and they kind of got right against the Dodgers. Why not the Why not the Twins? How about the Twins? You know, what a better time to do it. How about a better opponent? I can't think of one. Like you said, they are the I think runaway favorites, other than maybe like the Yankees with some of the additions they made this off season with like Juan Soto. Um, but it's it, it, it's a series that I think will be. It'll either expose a lot of the flaws and panics that Twins fans may have about this team or mm -hmm. patch things up because the offense at times, we've seen them. They just can't put the bat on the ball with runners in scoring position. This is a series where I think that's do or die because there's some teams you can maybe get away with that against. The Royals, the Guardians. You know, you could probably get a game by not being able to uh, knock in however many guys. You strand a lot of guys on base. The Dodgers are going to make you pay. That lineup top to bottom is essentially an all-star team for right. most divisions. So um, this is a series that I think is going to be very telling for the uh, the Twins. Why not just start with uh, a, a nice performance today at home? Yeah, no kidding. And, and Rocco mentioned uh, towards the end of his availability today pregame that a lot of the players did stick around uh, despite the rain out yesterday to work on things and whatnot. Uh, so th they're well aware of it. And... I talked about this with Mackie and Judd on the on the full episode that we had that's also on the feeds right now from this morning on Monday morning. We're recording this on Monday afternoon at about 4.30 that they're going to take their walks, the Twins lineup is. They're going to do whatever they can to still work a lot of counts and, and do everything to basically make pitchers work, but they've struggled in runners in scoring position. You know, they have the two hits uh, on Saturday, but they have go over 10 with runners in scoring position to show for it. You'd like to think that the dam's going to break and maybe the floodgates open against a really good Dodgers team. Um, and James Paxton's on the mound, certainly not their number one option, but still, you'd like to get a tone setting win here. Now, I did mention, Age, that there was some brief roster adjustments. So Jose Miranda has been recalled from St. Paul. Uh, Jose had a pretty terrific 2022 season. 
Last year was ineffective to start. Then he has a shoulder injury. It kind of like wiped away a lot of 2023 for him, and it just wasn't a positive year. Today in the lineup, he's batting fifth. So he's batting fifth in the lineup today. Uh, we'll see what he's able to do. You know, Rocco did allude to the fact, I found this a little interesting, that he is not the everyday third baseman. So if you're expecting Jose Miranda to like be batting fifth and be the everyday third baseman, because you've got to remember Royce Lewis is still injured, I wouldn't expect that. This might be a guy that DHs. This could be a guy that spells some time at first base as well. Uh, but he certainly won't be the everyday for uh, third baseman. But I did like this quote uh, from Rocco kind of talking about what would Jose Miranda be able to bring to the Twins. And he mentioned that he gets to pitches up in the zone. He gets to pitches down in the zone. He can shorten the swing and manipulate the barrel. What that tells me, Age, is that's not a guy who's going to go up there and work counts and try to look for walks like, uh, like this team does from an approach-wise. This guy's in the lineup to drive in some runs and hopefully spark something for a team that just can't seem to drive in a run with scoring position. And they need a guy like that. You know, if you come in, you're kind of the fresh face in the clubhouse now after getting that call up. If he wants to pull him aside and say, hey, you're here to hit the ball. Like, I'd, I'd go out, do your approach, and try to find the Jose Miranda we saw circa 2022. You know, like you said, 2023 was a down year for him. He battled some stuff um, personally with injury and everything like that. But this could be a nice little coming out party. And you're right. He's not going to be the, the everyday third base, and he's 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 not going to be the guy that you kind of look to as like a automatic write in on that uh, that lineup card. But he could earn it. I mean, right. he's he's a guy that certainly can earn it because we've we've seen Jose Miranda have the skill set, have the batting prowess uh, to be able to be a guy that is a you know what he's gonna he's gonna win a matchup against the starting pitcher. He's a guy that matches up very well. And to your point, you mentioned James Paxton on the bump on the bump today for the Dodgers. I think that's a guy to do it. The, 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 the Twins are going to be pretty fortunate in this series because they should miss uh, Yamamoto, who started, I want to say, yesterday against the Cubs. So um, they're going to dodge kind of the ace, so to speak. And I say that lightly because the Dodgers seem to have a couple aces in their, uh, in their rotation, but um, kind of the flashy name that they signed this year. So Jose Miranda, addition to the lineup, I like it. Um, that call up, I think, says we know we, we clearly address that there's an issue with our hitting um, through the first, like you said, seven games only in 11 days. So uh, let's see if a guy like Jose Miranda can maybe spice that up and get some bats waking up. So also, by the way, and again, we're recording this before first pitch, about two hours before first pitch. So we won't get into too many things like game preview stuff necessarily, just because obviously we're going to get a little bit of burned out there. But I did find this interesting. So Manuel Margot will bat leadoff. Um, there's no left-handers in the lineup against the lefty in James Paxton. You did see Rocco use Max Kepler a lot still as a lefty against left-handed pitchers throughout last season. You saw it already a few times in 2024. They elect to go all right-handed here to start. Um, that part's interesting. And also just having someone like Jose Miranda basically come in here and bat fifth, you know, who was playing in St. Paul just not too long ago, I think that says that, okay, we've had a week here, and yes, we haven't found the consistency that we want to get in our approach and our routine, but we're, we're going to make some slight tweaks here. And getting Margot at leadoff, and he'll play right field in the first game of the series, I think that says that they want to change things up a little bit and putting Jose Miranda there as well. You know, I, I, Carlos Correa held some court uh, in, the, in the locker room before uh, with some reporters, and he didn't seem frustrated necessarily, but you can tell that with the way they're going about things, that eventually the runs are going to come, and it's a 162 baseball game series uh, season. So you're not going to get all the runs right away. You're going to fail us runners in scoring position. So again, I don't sense like that panic by the roster. I don't sense that, sense that panic from Rocco Baldelli. This is just a team that wants to get in a rhythm here, and they'll have three against the Dodgers. They're going to play the Detroit Tigers on the road after this homestand ends. And I think you know by the vibe check of next week, we'll kind of be able to figure out really where this team is at a couple weeks into the year. And I don't want to put you on the spot here, so apologies if uh, you don't have this information present, but with how hot of a guy like Alex Kirilov has been to start this season, I understand the matchups. It's a lefty in Paxton, and you want to avoid some of those lefty-lefty matchups, but for a, a matchup today like you have with Byron Box and Carlos Correa, that's, I mean, this is for them. How, do, how easy or maybe just tough of a decision was it to mull over for Rocco to probably say, you know what? Kirilov's going to sit today. He's not going to get in that starting lineup. Maybe we go to him later with uh, some bullpen changes, but he's not in our starting uh, lineup to, to begin the game. 
Yeah, I, I think that's good. You know, um, look, Kirilov's hitting the cover off the ball, so I'm not denying to say, like, it's good to sit your probably your best hitter or second best hitter uh, that, that's on your team right now. But he's probably going to for sure get a pinch hit opportunity if the Dodgers do go to the bullpen. And that's, that's, that's kind of the luxury, I, I will say kind of lightly, of having such a left-handed option that the Twins have that, yes, they always are going to bop and they're going to have a lot of good players in the lineup against righties. But once that bullpen gets going and, you know, you have a matchup that's heading your way and maybe Pax is not as effective and you have to bring in a reliever and you're still going to get someone on base calling upon Alex Kirloff, you know, to hit for – uh, let's say it's Austin Martin who's in the lineup on on, uh, on Monday batting ninth. Like having the luxury of those lefties there is going to be good. So they'll still turn to their bench, and the Twins have made it abundantly clear how much they do believe and love platooning. Uh, so yeah, I, I would envision that that's still uh, and going to be just okay. You know, you mentioned things about the plate, and I was able to catch up with Edward Julian in the locker room to ask him about the approach because we've pontificated and Justin Morneau made a point on the broadcast during the opening series about you know some of these guys like Julian and Walner and Kirloff to a degree a lot of them got used to the automated strike zone in the minor leagues and that is nice but how do you make that adjustment to the major league level does that make that transition easier does it make it harder and I was able to kind of ask Julian basically the same question now that he's been up for a little bit and you know he told me that it's it's the same thing and he doesn't really care what the strike zone is behind there but he tries to go out with the same approach and that's hit the pitch that he can drive and try to take a take a pitch that's a ball of course and i followed up with well you know if you have a runner on versus you know leading off an inning like julian typically is a leadoff man you know does the approach change and he said he tries to be a little bit more aggressive early in the count because he knows that guy's not going to want to try to walk him obviously with runners in scoring position and you know Julian's had a couple not a couple more than a few strikeout lookings for this year and that's been kind of puzzling for a guy that has such a good eye at the plate and I don't sense again that that's a guy that's going to completely rip off his new routine but he is probably someone that if he does come up with runners in scoring position maybe it's a pinch hitting opportunity on Monday or just throughout the season in general probably look for him to speed more first and second pitch swinging than trying to find the perfect pitch you know five or six into the at-bat by that point you have two strikes it makes life difficult so I think these guys are well aware of eventually these runs are going to come and there'll be some slight tweaks that happen throughout early on in the baseball season but I don't think this is a start from scratch fire everybody fire David Popkins uh, situation that some fans kind of make it out to be no and that's and and that's the thing it's just so frustrating because I as much as I think you myself fans want to maybe like jump the gun and like point the finger and say like hey this is written in red ink on the wall like we know that uh, he needs to swing the bat more and stuff it's it's so early in the season where some of these guys like you said they're kind of working with newer approach they're still like you can do all you want in spring training you can kind of test things out but it's different once you actually get to target field and now it's past opening day and now you're trying to find like you said you're, you're trying to find that groove so um if he has a new approach i'm sure they'll tweak i'm sure they'll kind of mix things up and whatnot but when it comes down to it at the end of the day i know a lot of fans are gonna say hey edward julian you're, you're gonna have to start probably putting the bat on the ball swinging um i think hey, that's where it comes down to is like would you would you rather him go back to the dugout looking at a pitch or swinging i would say swinging because that means you at least thought in, in that's you know one conversation to another because you you see a um, educated swing where you think you have a beat on the ball and then you have a Javi Baez swing and miss and a ball that's down in Tuscaloosa and it's like okay you know why would you even consider getting the bat off the shoulders there so um, but Edward Julian I think in his short tenure in the, in, the, in the major leagues has shown that he he's a good contact hitter he, he he's a guy that can put the bat on the ball so if he takes that chance it's it's probably more than not. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt if he saw something like he expected something like, or like you said, he's looking for a certain pitch early in an at bat to where he's reading a situation and trying to scratch a run across if somebody's on base. A couple other roster notes that I noticed uh, today that that are worth uh, sharing. So Jorge Alcala, there was like this little confusion on Saturday's game about you know was it was it Alcala about to come in? Was it Jay Jackson? Was it Griffin Jackson? Then there was there an injury. What what the heck? There was some confusion towards the end. Well, it turns out Jorge Alcala told Rocco right near the end of his appearance that he didn't something didn't feel right so he said I probably shouldn't go out there and pitch if I don't feel right obviously so that elected why Jay Jackson got out there um, and no IL stint quite yet for Alcala they haven't heard merely what's wrong I think they're going to clearly they rested on Sunday with the rain out he'll probably not pitch at all today they're already kind of short uh, in arm because they already just placed uh, Durante uh, Daniel Durante on the IL that's how they called up Jose Miranda so they are a pitcher short 
and hell, they might be more like two pitchers short for today if you really factor in that part. So a shorter bullpen today most likely and maybe some positive news with Alcala, but probably crossing your fingers. And unfortunately, a lot of these pitchers in baseball, and this is just a Twins problem, are kind of dropping like flies a little bit. So hopefully Jorge Alcala is okay. We'll, we'll see what happens there. He's had a ton of injury uh, problems, and you'd like to think that eventually – He's been healthy, and he looked like he was in spring, and there was a lot of encouraging factors that I noticed in just a short, a few outings that he had in 2024. But a uh, little update from from the clubhouse there on Jorge Alcala. Yeah, and, and that, how about a blow for that um, for that bullpen too? I mean, you start the year, you already have Duran, um, no longer, you know, he's not he's not with the active club, so he starts the year on the IL. Um, Alcala, and I know you were relatively high on Alcala prior yeah. to opening day too, about a guy who could probably play a significant role. Um, later in the season, if he kind of hits his stride and starts, you know, hitting pitches and whatnot, but um, for a bullpen that I think was touted as, you know, up there in the echelon of higher talented bullpens in the league, mm-hmm. uh, something that this team should be able to rely on a lot of the time. It's it's tough because now you're already shorthanded. It's like um, it's it's similar to watching the Wild maybe <laughs> start the game and like, hey, we're gonna, Kro Kaprizov is going to trip somebody in the first minute, and all of a sudden, hey, you're starting kind of behind the eight ball. So now right. that puts even pressure on, like you said at the top of the show, kind of the depth at starting pitcher has been questionable to start the season. That puts more pressure on those guys to have a quality outing so that you don't have to go into that bullpen to where now in a series that's very important um, at this stage of the, uh, the year just to kind of get right for the Twins against the Dodgers, you're going to need a quality outing from your starters here so you don't have tired bullpen arms here for the next couple of days against the top team in the league. And the good news is guys like Theobar, Topa, Duran, they are progressing. Uh, they began to throw a little bit. They began some rehab process that our signs are they're pointing upward to their return to the Twins, so hopefully they'll uh, get some good news on them too as the week progresses. So, yeah, you might be down Alcala, but maybe you get guy like Theobar, Topa, or Duran, obviously back. Good problems to have there. Uh, one last thing, because I asked Jose Miranda this because I did spot him uh, last summer, I believe, at an episode of Monday Night Raw. I'm a big <laughs> wrestling fan. Age is a big wrestling fan. We could certainly talk about WrestleMania for hours. We will not do that to the audience. Uh, but I asked, I asked Jose, I was like, did you have a WrestleMania takeaway? And he goes, oh, you know, actually, I'm not a big wrestling guy. Like, I, I think it's interesting and fun. And I, he said that he went to his first Raw last year when it was here in August, and he had a blast. And I asked Royce Lewis the same thing, no. So I'm, I'm on a mission to try to find which Twins player I can attach my ridiculous wrestling takes to. I know that's very self-serving, but... Trying to find some WrestleMania takeaways, man. It's the Super Bowl of, of, of WWE, and I was hoping there'd be some Twins player to uh, to give me some type of note. I I bet you you got to find a pitcher. It's not gonna be it's not gonna be a a, a player in the field. It's gonna be okay. I, I bet you it's a bullpen arm. I feel like they're a little quirky, similar to like in hockey. Not to go back to it again, but like yeah. the goalies are always a little right. You know, little something's loose up there. I feel like that's the same thing with like a closer or some like middle reliever. I yeah, got a feeling call. they'll gravitate a little bit more. So if you want your, uh, if you want to sniff around, sniff around your, a little uh, bit for your wrestling, uh, wrestling guys, I bet you the bullpens were to, were to okay. Be. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll still press on that a little bit. Try to figure out, uh, <laughs> figure out where that is. Hey, this is Twin Scoring Our Twin Show Extra Innings content. Uh, we'll be live before games at when they're night games here on the Scoring Our YouTube channel, and then digestible on the podcast feed. And then for day games, you can expect content shortly after the final out, uh, about a half hour, 45 minutes or so after post-game access. That's kind of the plan for extra innings. I know some people have been still asking, are you going to go live after night games? Probably not going to do that so much this year. There will be content that is evergreen um, going into the game. And then for day games, you can expect content in a traditional kind of post-game show right here with the roving cast of characters. Shout out to everyone who has helped us get over um, nearly 2,500 subscribers on YouTube. We really appreciate that. The more people that like, the more people that subscribe, uh, give us a five-star rating on the audio side of Apple, Spotify, Score North app. Helps kind of spread the word. So we appreciate that for everyone who's been able to do so. Again, hit that subscribe button. My name is Declan Goff. That's AJ Fredrickson. This has been Score North Extra Inning Content.